Welcome to Soccerholics TV. Well, this is our first video back for 2018. We're here at Football Factory. Uh, this current week of games is all the domestic cup action, the FA Cup and domestic cups in Europe. So we thought we would take some time out and talk about discussions and topics that are hitting the news headlines currently. My name is Ben, of course, joined here by Chris on my left and uh, the newly appointed Harrison. He's uh, joined the team a couple weeks ago, but he's here with us. So we thought we would talk about the January transfer window. Uh, big question on our minds when this was posed to us, actually Chris came up with the topic, was that should it exist or should it not exist? So let's dive right into it guys. What do you think? January transfer window, we're at the 6th of January today. So we have about 14 uh, more days uh, for clubs to attain players across Europe. 24. 20, sorry, 24, my bad, 24. Just waking up. What, what do you think? It's okay. Well, firstly, welcome to our time zone. Uh, Thank 24 you. 24 days. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Uh, secondly, as I said, the January transfer window doesn't really need to exist. Uh, I think Harry can share the same thing. You know, United has a big squad, as you know. You guys don't really need to get new players, you know. You got to count on those players that you have. But uh, I'll let you have uh, All right, well, I'll let you have your say. Well, I know you're an Arsenal fan, and so I'm not going to... I don't want to worry you too much, both of you guys, actually, but... My boys, Manchester United, are breathing down the necks of Mesedo, so we're going to try and swipe him, I think, this January. And I think for a team who are competing for the league, or a team that's in the in the bottom half of the Premier League who really wants to get out of the prim, uh, out of the relegation zone, sorry, I think January transfer window is fantastic. I actually like it. I think one, it gives it it, it allows teams that are fledgling another chance. If they have the money, they can buy a certain player and they can be back at the top. And it allows a team like United, like an Arsenal, like a Spurs, like a Chelsea, who are trying to see if they can really solidify their season and really claim it as a good one, to bolster up their attack, bolster up their defense. When you look at Liverpool, they went out and spent $75 million on Virgil van Dijk, and Chelsea just signed Ross Barkley. I think these are, these, these, these are the things that make the Premier League great, that make European football great. The money is massive. The transfers are big. And transfers are what grabs attention. I think it's a long season, and without giving teams the opportunity to uh, to strengthen their squads, I think it's a mistake. I like the January window, and especially for a team like United with what seems to be unlimited money to spend, the January transfer window is fantastic for me. I like it. Ben? All right. Well, I'm actually for and against the January transfer. So here's why I'm Pick for. Pick a side. Well, no, I'm going to I'm going to go both because I mean because it makes it interesting for me as I look at the look at the question in point. This is why I'm for the January transfer window. Because let's say that you are a team and you have uh, major injuries since uh, the summer transfer window. You've got major injuries leading up to January and you're competing in a cup final or you are trying to get out of relegation zone. These are the times where you actually rely on the January transfer window to bring in reinforcements, to bolster your squad and to help you along the way, right? Because if you don't, um, you know, there's going to be a backlash because obviously I can see because if let's say you cut the transfer window, I would see a lot of managers losing their jobs because let's say you had a string of results and the manager's going to say, well, what do you want me to do? I have injuries. I can't get new players because I don't have an option to get new players. So the fans turn on the club and they call. So then really in this only instance, and it would only be this instance, the manager would become a scapegoat yeah. and, and they would lose their job because of that. Now here's why I'm against the trend. Here's why I'm against it, because uh, let's say if you don't have the transfer window, imagine a world where every team actually competes on the same level. But I guess what you guys are missing the point a little bit, we haven't realised that all the young players from the club would actually get their chance, because the manager would say, "Well, who do I turn to? I'll let, oh, well, I've only got a 16-year-old on my roster. Now he could either be a flop or he could be something sensational." And that would be a great platform for the world to see. Here's this unknown who we've never seen before because a manager would never pick him anyway, normally, right? But he would be due to pick him because this is, uh, this is only lifeline. So I think it would be a great asset for, for, for both things. And then there'd be no excuses if you, if you cut the transfer window because the manager would have to be in the same boat as all the other teams and would actually like be competing fresh. The thing is also, young kids, to me, especially in the Prem, get a, get a lot of run-in near the end of the season. And when you when you mentioned that managers would be scapegoats if there was no January window, 
this kind of reminds me a bit of maybe what Newcastle will be going into, or Rafa Benitez, um, down the line. He's made it clear he needs money in the January window if he wants to do what he's been put in to do as manager with Newcastle. And I think you're right. The January window provides managers who have a team that's not that strong to just get that one extra player. Maybe one extra player, maybe make a bit of cash by selling off a player. Players want to leave too. I mean, there's the individual needs of a player. Maybe he doesn't want to stick out the whole season. Maybe he wants to go win a trophy. There's a bunch of things I think that you need to factor in, and that's why I like the window. I like January. But you see with the window, it's not required. Like, it really isn't. If you're trusted as a manager, your job's supposed to get your things done during the summer. That's the plan. Like, you know, like, when you, for me, for instance, I plan out my whole year, if possible. You don't, like, wait till June, and then, like, yeah, it's okay to reflect in January, like, okay, who's working well, who's not. For instance, this January transfer window provides opportunities for players now to switch clubs, to help bolster their opportunity for Russia 2018. That's one of the few positives that I see. However, you know, when you're a big star and you leave your club, you leave your club and you ruin your plans. Like, let's say, for instance, Jamie Vardy, for instance. I know he probably won't move, but Marnez will probably move. That kind of screws up Leicester. Now, Leicester has to go buy a replacement. You have to go get a replacement then. The thing is, if you have your team set in place... Like, so, but, that's what, but, but, but that's why the window helps a team. No, but you see, that's also why the window... The reason why the window does help a team is... It's kind of like a back out clause for a team. So if, for instance, we look at Liverpool, they can sell, they could have sold Coutinho in the summer. They could have had all their business done. Everything's sorted. We focus on the Liverpool side. They should have got Virgil Van Dijk during the summer. Instead, now we're looking for January. But you know, look, if they eat their breakfast when they're supposed to eat their breakfast and not eat it during lunchtime, which is what they are doing in the middle of the season, it makes sense. Like, look, Van Dijk, he scored the winner against Everton. That's great and everything. But I'm not the biggest fan of that move happening in January now. That should have been done in the summer. We knew it was going to happen. It's a waste of four months. It's like, hey, you're going to buy a pair of jeans or buy this hat. You buy the hat, you wait six months, you buy the hat later for twice the price. It's not worth it. I know, but that's life, isn't it? Like, no, that's no. what happened with our Arsenal. Arsenal. Arsenal bought Lacazette. Lacazette, he paid way over the price. No, because but two years ago, he cost half half less what he cost. He cost, what, 50-something 50, 50 million? But the market's and changed. Arsenal Be- could have got him for less. The market's changed, though. You have to realise. It's, it's like all this, No, going. this all started because of Liverpool and Chelsea with Torres and that 50 million move. Yeah. That's why the January transfer window is so popular for everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's not a joke. Torres proved it during the previous season. Same thing with Lacazette. My issue with the Lacazette signing was, yes, I agree it should have came sooner, but I don't like players when you have one good season and then afterwards you don't build on it. You don't jump the gun. Lacazette moved at the right time. Unfortunately, right now, he moved at the time where Arsenal's in transition. You could say the same thing with some of you know Manchester United signings as well. Well, the thing yeah. I'd like to say, I mean, I guess to, to maybe wrap it up, is that no one can really predict what's going to happen when you're playing so many football matches. When there's so many games in a season... You've got, your, you've got your team set up, and most teams with a proper manager will make the necessary moves in the summer, set up their squad, and say, this is the team we're going to run with to the end of the season. But again, no one, nobody can predict the, the injuries, the different team needs. What if a team starts to flop? I mean, we've seen Chelsea have terrible seasons before. I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. last season under Mourinho. United has had bad seasons where they look like they have a good squad. So, you know, it's tough to predict what will well, happen in a 90-minute game, let alone... Well, look, you let have alone to look at it like this. 50 90-minute games. If you're a manager, for instance, and I know that my top striker is going to be playing, let's say, roughly between 50 to 60 games, I say, look, the target's for you to get the 40. You give hope to the youth players as well to have them have 5 or 10 games within the season. You should be planning ahead and picking those games because... Especially with how the game is, it's not about the quality. I could care less if you can ping a ball 40 yards, and I could care less if you can score 30 goals in the season. My thing is, tactically, how the team's set up. If I'm playing a team that's going to have a deep block, I know you're going to be ineffective and you're going to be more effective. So that's what matters. And these managers now have to show off more skill. And I think with the January transfer window pulled, you know what? You're going to see that more, more of the long-term planning. All right. Okay, great. Great comments. Uh, just before we wrap up, in, interesting notes is uh, England only run it from the 1st to the 31st, but all the other European leagues get two days extra to the 2nd of February, which is quite interesting. So they get a couple more days extra. And then news just in regarding just quickly, Philip Coutinho, quite interesting about him. Will he or will he not go to Barcelona? They Liverpool have actually demanded £145 million. If he goes, it will be the biggest transfer that a player has gone without a release clause in his contract. That's Quite a very nice fact. Very interesting. For the fans, Let us know what you think. Fans, this is all I have to say. 
Diego Costa's back at Atletico. That's all I need to know. Bargain signing of January. Two goals. <laughs> Watched the match earlier today. Got a red card. Love the mat. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, follow us here on, uh, we're on all the, all the information is coming up on your screen now. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. You forgot Twitter. Twitter. Just about to say it. It's Easy. on the screen. I know how I do my job. It's Thanks for watching, here. guys. So myself, Chris, Harry. We'll see you next time right here on Soccerholics TV.